this 30th day of January and welcome to the Daily Post where we bring you some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope will help you and uplift you through the day. As usual we begin with the scripture and this morning it comes from 1st book of Kings chapter 8 and verse 61. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, uh, you need to read through Exodus chapters 23 and 24 and Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16. The thoughts of the day. The men who try to do something and fail are infinitely better than those who try to do nothing and succeed. The way I see it, if you want to see the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Without a problem, you will never know the true power that is inside you, the gift that God gives us to overcome. The motivational thought for the day, we are all born dumb, some remain so. <laughs> on this day, in 1606 on this day in England, in London, Sir Everard Digby, Thomas Winter, John Grant and Thomas Bates were hung, drawn and courted for their part in the, quote, gunpowder plot, unquote. This was the plot organised by Guy Fawkes to blow up the Houses of Parliament. In 1873, on this day around the world in 80 days by Jules Verne, was published in France by Pierre Jules Hetzel. In 1945, 9,400 people die in the deadliest maritime disaster in history. The ship Wilhelm Gustav was sunk by a Soviet submarine during World War II. In 1958, French fashion designer Yves Saint Laurent, aged 22, held his first major fashion show in Paris on this day. In 1961, the contraceptive pill went on sale in Britain, although it didn't become available on the National Health Service until December of that year. In 1972, this day recognised as, quote, Bloody Sunday, unquote, British troops shoot dead 14 people during a demonstration in Londonderry, Northern Ireland. They claimed they opened fire in response to shots from a gunman in a nearby block of flats. In 2017 on this day, scientists in central China reveal what they believe to be the oldest known human ancestor, 50, 540 million year old Saccharithus in a fossil. The personal story of the day, looking good. Years ago, a young boy wandered from case to case in a candy store, trying to decide what to buy. His mother, tired of waiting, called, hurry up and spend your money, we must be going. To this, the young boy replied, but mum, I only have one penny, so I've got to spend it carefully. So too, we have only one life to live, so we must spend it carefully. If we had ten lives, we might be able to afford to spend one of them merely on pleasure or in making money. In explaining the shortness of life, the Bible uses many illustrations, one of them being that of a flower in Psalm 103 and verses 15 and 16. A flower is an object of loveliness. As a receptacle of nectar, it usually gives forth a pleasing aroma and it performs a necessary function in the production of new seeds. But what, what strikes us most about a flower is that its beauty is so brief. Because our days on earth are few, we should make the most of our flowering time. The nectar of the love of God in our heart 
should attract people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our life should be colourful with spiritual service, remembering that we are allowed to bloom for the express purpose of bringing forth new seed, that is, leading others to Jesus Christ. Your life is brief. Make it as attractive as possible. The devotional thoughts of the day, the first is entitled Greater Confidence. The scripture is from Luke chapter 1 and verse 37 with references from John chapter 11 verses 1 to 44. Nothing is impossible with God. God's glory is often revealed in tragedy as the above scripture shows. It surely grieved Jesus' heart to learn that his friend Lazarus had become so ill, as we read in verse 5. Yet Jesus knew that God would reveal his power and glory through this incident. In fact, instead of rushing to heal Lazarus, Jesus delayed going to Bethany, which allowed for Lazarus to die. See verse 21. Without the greatest story of God's glory, this delay seems cruel. But notice that Jesus said that he was glad that he hadn't reached Lazarus in time, in verse 15. Jesus knew that people's greatest need was to believe, to trust, and to follow the one true God. Jesus' conversation with Martha set the stage for realizing that resurrection was not some distant theological hope. Instead, Jesus boldly declared, I am the resurrection and the life, in verse 25. Prior to Lazarus being raised from the dead, Martha had no idea what that meant. As Jesus stood outside Lazarus' tomb, he began to pray out loud. Notice that Jesus began by thanking the Father that his prayer had already been heard, in verse 41. This indicated that, his, that he knew that the prayer had been answered. Jesus was praying aloud for the crowd's benefit. He already knew that the Father heard his prayer. But those listening didn't know that. They needed to know that Jesus was truly God's Son sent to earth. They needed to know that resurrection was only possible through Jesus. Jesus knew that his prayers were heard because he always prayed according to the Father's will. There is here a profound lesson for us. Confidence in prayer grows as our understanding of God's will grows. The second thought, salvation is of the Jews. A scripture from John chapter 4 and verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. The calling of the Jewish people was fantastic. Through Abraham, the people of Israel were to be a blessing for the whole world. God raised up a people who would walk with him. They were to cleanse themselves from idols and sanctify themselves for a life for and with God. God wanted an entire nation set apart for himself so he could have fellowship with them and reveal himself to them. God made Israel the bearer of the law, the revelation of righteousness. There were priests who stood before God continually performing temple services in his presence. Through the temple service, sacrifices were continually made unto God. The people of Israel were aware of their ongoing sin and they had a longing to please God by upholding the law. They were zealous from God and in the manner of the old covenant they had both knowledge and experience of God, something the Gentiles lacked. Not even the Samaritans, who were a mixture of various peoples and Jews, had this knowledge or experience. Jesus knew this, every nation was to be a recipient of God's power, but at this time, only one nation was the bearer of God's grace. This is why it was so important that Israel was set apart, sanctified and cleansed. 
This was why it was so important that they carefully followed the commands and regulations prescribed by the Lord. They could not do whatever they pleased. Jesus also lived under these conditions. He came to fulfill the law. He was the Messiah the scriptures spoke about, the one God had prepared and for whom the people waited. Jesus was aware of the role the Israelites were to play in the historic record and he professed himself to it. Don't forget that Jesus was a Jew of the scriptural kind. Salvation came through him. Today, there is a new covenant. You are now part of God's Israel. You are to reveal the plan of God to all nations. One humorous uh, moment for the day, the three men sitting on the beach in Jamaica, sipping on a cool drink and fishing lines out in the water, are talking about how they managed to end up there. The first man said, well, I ran a superstore out in California, but business got so bad, terrible. And one day there was a bad fire and I collected the insurance money and now I moved here. The next man says, well, well, I had a jewelry store in Midwest. Business went downhill and then we were robbed. Everything was taken. I collected the insurance money and moved out here also. The final guy said, well, I had a little fishery on the East Coast. And one day it was, uh, we had a boat and a, a little fishing shed, etc., etc. And one day a hurricane came and it blew everything away. I had nothing left. Well, I collected the insurance company and I moved out here. Well, the other two men looked at each other in confusion and then one of them asked, how did you get someone to start a hurricane? The facts of the day, when glass breaks, the cracks move faster than 3,000 miles an hour, 4,800 kilometers per hour. To photograph such an event, a camera must shoot at one millionth of a second. Tourists visiting Iceland should know that tipping at a restaurant is considered an insult in that country. And the closing thought, who sees us in our weaknesses and loves us anyway? It's a rhetorical question and we should all know the answer to that. Thanks for joining us today. We hope that the Daily Post will be helpful and uplifting through the day. We hope we'll see you again tomorrow morning. Have a blessed day and bye for now.